Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. Today we're here with Jeff. Been looking forward to this one for a while. We saw Jeff out at the quarantine cruise. Yeah. So let's start with year. It's 1971, Chevrolet Camaro, obviously. Yep. Uh, it was my first love as a kid. My first car in high school was a 75 Camaro with a flat black hood and a three-speed Muncie transmission. Okay. So okay. nowhere near, in my opinion, as nice as this one's gotten to be, but yeah. uh, it was fun to drive and I just got hooked at an early age. And, I've owned quite a few cars in my life. So. Yeah, you were saying off camera, 68 cars 68 you 68 cars, yeah, this is 68 right here, so. Is it really? Yeah, I bought it in 2017, and I was on the internet looking around for cars, and just, because yeah. I've always been a second gen Camaro guy, I came across this one for sale, and it just grabbed me. It was in uh, Arizona, made a few phone calls. A friend of mine was running a Nissan store down in Scottsdale. He went over and took a look at it and said, yeah, it's a nice car. Sent an appraiser down, did all the due diligence that you're supposed to do, put sure. a deposit on it, and uh, ended up buying it. And I was living in uh, the Outer Banks at the time in North Carolina, which is as far east as you can go. Sure, man, I uh, that Yeah, there. so they shipped it to me, showed up with it, drove it, moved to uh, Temecula the next year, 2018. Showed it at a uh, one of the car, local car shows here, and I'm sitting in a lawn chair, just getting my first real exposure to the Southern California car scene, right? Because yeah. when you're a kid, you hear about all this stuff when you're growing sure, up. So sure. uh, some guy is walking up, and everybody's looking at it, but this guy's crawling underneath the car, and he's inside the interior, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, so he's like, hey, you own the car? And I said, yeah. He goes, I built the car. And he built it in Lake Elsinore, not too far from where we're standing back in 2012. He starts talking he to me. builds it in 12, it ends up in Arizona. You're in North Carolina, buy it from Arizona, bring it out here. And what are the odds of that, right? That's pretty wild. So we're talking and he's, he says, yeah, I sold it to a guy in Arizona. I said, well, I bought it from this lady. And, and apparently the guy that he sold it to in Arizona passed away and his wife had the car. She put it up for sale. I bought it, shipped it to North Carolina. We moved here within 20 miles of where it was built. And he's, you know, all over it where he's talking. I've got the paint code. He's got this. He's going through yeah. the entire car, right? Yeah. So uh, it's been an original SS car, but he took the 12-bolt out and put a 10-bolt in it, put the 12-bolt in his Chevelle. So what engine was in it when you got it? It was a 396 out of a GMC 1967 truck <laughs> that had a million miles on it. It was tired. <laughs> it was like pulling an anchor, right? So, so you've kind of like fully built the car since you've owned it. You've everything done. but the paint. And the wheels, everything yeah. but the paint and the wheels have been done. Yeah, so let's let's pop it and see. Sure. Uh, it's definitely not the old GMC truck engine no, in here. No, not at all. What the hell did you do? Pretty much everything. So uh, we tore the old motor out and went to work. And I spent almost a month myself just cleaning the engine compartment. Everything you see is rattle can paint from Napa. And my thought process behind it was if I get it to look nice enough, if I was working on it and dropped a wrench and nicked it, I could just take the- You don't care at that Touch point. it up, right? So, and the interesting thing about it is, is that Brian uh, likes TriStar Motors. And TriStar's out of Pennsylvania. Okay. And they build purpose-built motors. So we put this motor together um, without the blower. It had about 630 horsepower to a 585 torque. I'm thinking, okay, that's gonna be a nice little motor for me. Cause I don't really, you know, I'm not a drag race guy. Yeah. So. So yeah. one day we're, we're putting it together, we're getting everything in it, and we realize the hood's not gonna close because of the intake we've got in the car. So we're like, ah, he wants me to put a ram, a ram system on, he wants me to put a hood scoop on. I'm like, ah, I'm not that guy, I just want a nice smooth look, right? He goes, well, we're gonna have to cut a hole in it. And I said, well, as long as we're gonna cut a hole in it, and he looks at me and says, blower. Oh my God, you guys are so, so funny. So, so. Uh, it says 496 on yes. the side. What do you start with to get 496? I have no clue. Got it, okay. I have no okay. clue. It came that way from TriStar. When I called TriStar to try to get the uh, components, they are very secretive about what they put in the car. Yeah. All they tell us is it's all top shelf stuff. They don't tell me it's Dart or Bird X or whatever <laughs> it is. They won't give me all that information. Roller rockers, it's a nice mild cam. But that engine alone, you said you're over 600 horsepower before Without you had the blower. the blower. Yeah, we're running about four pounds of boost. Okay, so pretty uh, mild, mild for where you could go. Because if you we wanted. didn't start out to be a blower car. Yeah, yeah. 10 to 1 compression motor, so we had to make sure we keep the boost down uh -huh. to not yep. get detonation. So, about four pounds of boost. It's running uh, about 812 to the crank. 
plenty for me. So stupid. It's crazy. It's way too. It's way too. I, I mean it in the best way. No, by the I way. get it. Listen, we're we're running three quarter throttle because I, it's to try to let this thing out just out of. That's nice, the way it's tuned. So when you mat it, it only gives you three quarter only. Three quarter only, only three, three quarter. quarter. And it still gets squirrely. Believe me. What, but it's do you know what the size of the blower is besides Six, massive? Six seventy one. Six seventy. Good vibrations <laughs> uh, sent us the blower in one day. We wanted to keep everything local. So we committed to one of the local blower shop guys. I won't tell you who it was, but uh, we were gonna do black on the blower. We waited 11 weeks. It slowed our build down by 11 weeks and he just didn't come through for us. It was uh, just a bad situation. He wasn't being forthright with us. Got it. Got our money back, called the blower shop, and next day we had the blower. Engine, transmission, suspension, uh, drive line, rear end, anything and everything underneath the car and interior I did at the same time took 13 months. Wow, that's really quick. Yeah, I worked on it every day for quite a while, so. What is it made to transmission-wise? Uh, Tremec, <clears throat> TKO 600, so it's okay. a five speed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it handles yep. all the horsepower real well. It's a dual pick clutch. Mm -hmm. uh, we did hydraulics on the clutch, obviously, because I'm getting old and my leg will shake if I'm, I'm trying to hold you, that man. clutch I'm down to the ground. I'm with you. Uh, went with Mazir, uh, everything I could that Mazir owns. They're in Escondido, great people to work with. Yeah. Uh, everything we asked them for, uh, they gave us. Yeah. If I needed a bolt, grab a bolt for me out of their own personal collection, just grab it to me and, and do it. But That's great. Not a hose clamp on the car. We did all AN fittings on everything. There's 52 of them. Believe me, I know that because I paid for them all. They're not cheap, No, they? they are not. Yeah. But a lot of attention to detail. Brian's very mm -hmm. good at, at what he does, obviously. You can yeah. see he is very meticulous like I want to be. Yeah. Everything and everything is all customized from the brackets to everything is down below. Is it still stock? Framework underneath, or is it? So the unibody is stock. Yeah. I just took everything apart, new bushings, new everything, and I put coilovers in the front. Okay. Uh, new leafs in the back, four nine inch, three fifty gear, because I drive it. Yeah. And I drive this thing all over. We go to San Diego, we go to Huntington Beach, we go to the quarantine cruise, obviously. Yeah. And it runs. I can run eighty miles an hour at twenty one hundred RPM, and it just. Just crazy. Yeah, well. it's so much fun. And I know it looked like you have cow tracks back there. Is, is that yeah, a cow track uh, setup? Yeah, so uh, really nice. We're trying to keep the the tires on the ground, hence the three quarter throttle and some of the other things that we're doing. That was my it. other question. I hadn't asked it since we'd been here, but I like obviously it stood out to me that big blower sticking out of the hood. Right. Not Small a tire. big no. massive rear tire. What are you running wheel tire set? So 18 here? inch, 285s in the back, 265s in the front. 285s back fit, there? Fit them down there, yeah. Oh my gosh. Bear brakes all the way around. I spent a little bit more money on them because uh, bears are a little bit more expensive. They are. Uh, but I wanted to be able to stop it, obviously, in yeah. um, Chevy orange calipers to match the stripe on the car. We tried to uh, set a little bit of tone on some things here and there. Mm -hmm. A little pinstripe and make it kind of pop a little bit. Now I go back and forth with people because some people hate manual. I like the manual brakes, two reasons. One, because I like the feel of the pedal. Yep. And two, it cleans up my engine compartment. <laughs> it really does. You, you know? don't have a big booster sticking no. up out there. What are the wheels? What what brand wheels? So they're Forged Union. Neat story about these as well. The guy who built the car, his friend, uh, and he built the car. When he left, he started his own wheel company called Forged Union. They built, the way I'm told the story, 13 sets of all one-off wheels. Hmm. And then he didn't went out of business. Oh, wow. These are one of those 13 sets. They're all three-piece. Uh, they're custom made and measured and offset for this car. To fit the car. Mm -hmm. That's bitching. I love the color on the, what is the color? So it's interesting. It's a 2013 Volvo United I love Gray it. Metallic. I love it. They put this color on Jettas, if you can imagine that. Dude, I've seen colors on cars that came off of Toyotas, came off of Hyundais, Kias. The one that really stands out to me is my friend Chris Ashton with his GT40. It's, it's, a, it's a Toyota blue and it's only on the Toyota pickup trucks. It's amazing what the, does to the, the color does to the body lines, right? I mean, you, you'd never know. When I tell people it's a Jetta so color, important. it's just... Uh, it's so important. What do you do in exhaust-wise on here? Because the car so, sounds great. Yeah, so the exhaust is all custom. It's, of course. It's one pipe from collector to the muffler, same pipe all the way over and back. There's no welds in it whatsoever except at the muffler and at the wow. collector. So it's all custom made by Brian and his, and his guys, Randy down there. Uh, took a week and a half to customize the exhaust. Flowmaster two-chamber uh, mufflers. Mm -hmm. I wanted it loud enough to be cool, but quiet enough so I could hear the blower. Yeah. 
It's such a great sound. I love the whine of a blower, and I love, I'm not a big turbo guy, but I gotta admit, man, that blow off cool. sound, yeah. it, it gets me fired yeah. up. I hang my head out the window and listen for it every chance I get. I know I've said this before, but it's funny. It's like people lose their mind when you do Ford and GM, any version of that, yeah. except if you put a Ford nine inch in, everyone goes, okay. yeah, that's yeah, cool. That's okay. That's all right. Yep. So now you kept it pretty stock looking in here, like door panels, are these? Yep. All st- are these all still the original panels? These are the original door panels, believe it or not. <laughs> and I got kept there. the car in good shape. I tried to keep it as, as stock as possible. The seats uh, have all been redone. I added these are still ori- stock seats. Stock frames, recovered. new foam, and mm-hmm. I tried to put a little bolster in them. Mm-hmm. And then everything else is pretty much the same. Autometer gauges, which I've always been an autometer gauge guy. Mm-hmm. Wanted to They're keep great. it looking a little bit retro. Give me a little bit of that muscle look, but I've always wanted those gauges and yeah. put that in there. Yeah, they're great. Everybody though. goes to Coda Digital's right now, and I understand why, but for me, I just, I wanted the yeah. comps. T-handle, I had a T-handle in my first Camaro, so yeah. I put it back on this one. And yeah, really cool, man. A lot of fun to drive, it really is. Yeah. Puts a smile on my face. That's great. And how many miles have you driven this since you finished the build? Oh, uh, a little over a thousand since the build. Okay. Yeah, so the weather's been kind of crappy this year, as you know, so <laughs> It's been sitting for the longest it's ever sat. It's been nasty. So I drive it three or four days a week. I drive it to work on Saturdays because everybody likes to look at it. And, and uh, I just like to get it out and drive it. And yeah. you know, keep the gaskets moist. It takes yeah. care of you, right? You know, they drive. Yeah, you. that's what they're built for. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're built for a mode of transportation, right? Now we've turned them into something much cooler, yeah. but what's the point in building it if you're not gonna drive it? I know where every little blend's at because I drive it. It gets little sure. dings here, you know, bug hits it there, or a rock hits it there, but sure. eventually I'll redo the outside of it, but uh, I'll keep it exactly the same color with the exact same stripe package. I'll just get everything redone and oh. smooth out some of the spots that need to be smooth. Yeah. So how long have you had it on the road now? You- uh, last June. So, so we're not even there. a year yet. Yeah, getting there. That's cool you already have a thousand miles. I mean, yeah. I know a thousand miles isn't a lot for a daily drive car, but no, for but a custom. Yeah, it is a You know, right. in less than a year to put a thousand, I mean, there's a lot of custom cars that they ain't gonna see a thousand well, miles ever. We take it down to Escondido for uh, cruising grand once in a while. For me, I wanted to drive it as much as I can long distances because like I said, when I take it to San Diego or Coronado or yeah. up to Huntington, I wanna make sure that the car's rolled out and it's gonna, not gonna have any problems. So I think, right? yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Or at least I know what's happening to the car. Roll, yeah, make sure it's rolling the way it's supposed to. But well, bitchin', let's go. Uh, let's go we'll for a ride. Cameras in, and we'll go drive it. Yeah, dude. let's go for a ride. Man, that blower is definitely inhibiting your view. Isn't it? <laughs> You gotta get Actually, used. it's not. It's all you see. <laughs> right. You gotta get used to it. Is it weird at first? The first time you got yeah, in, did it feel like, oh, I screwed up. I shouldn't have done this. Well, yeah. I'm thinking, what did I just do? Yeah. Sweeping right-hand turns are, are tough. Because I can't see. That takes you up. You can't see, like, the center or what's on this side, really. Yep. yep. Sharp right-hand turns, no problem. Right. It's the sure. sweeps. Yeah, because you look over and you can see here. Yeah. I just think it's hilarious that that your your reasoning wasn't I need to put a blower on here, I need to make more power. No, you're already making over 600 horsepower, yeah. but it wasn't gonna fit. Oh, well, if we're gonna cut the hood, let's throw a massive cool. that's blower. Exactly what, it's just, that's exactly the way it happened. It seems like it rolls down the road pretty nicely. I mean, yeah. hell, we're on a pretty crappy road here, lots of bumps. And yep. You set yourself up with nice clearance. We try again, we try to set it up just to drive it. Yeah. I didn't care about A to B as fast as everybody else does. I just wanted to drive it. You, I mean, you have so much power it's there. A, it's more than a lot of like You barely touched it, and I could feel it just I ready to lunge. All right, now you just got the slightly oh shit face out of me. <laughs> it's really funny, dude, as you're going left, I cannot see what's over there. I can't, and I, it's Like, I'd have to be like, <laughs> it's the same for me. Excuse me, side. Jeff, I'm gonna be in your face here. <laughs> what a trip, man. It is fun to drive, I promise you. Yeah. 
I'm glad you built something you enjoy that much, man. It will go. <laughs> okay, you got the full oh, oh shit face out of me. Just it so will know. go. <laughs> I got you. No, I can tell you're very relaxed. You know your car well. I got you. By the way, you guys, one of my most terrifying things is people that want to show off for the camera yeah, and drive no. beyond their skill set. No. Nope. Or beyond the ability of their car. Right. I, I, I like that you're, you're driving in a mode, that, like that's perfect for me. You spin the tire a little bit, I go, oh shit. Right. It just spins on you. I mean, hell, you are running a 285 back there, yeah, bro. <laughs> but still, it'll, it, it's all it wants to do. And this is three-quarter throttle. But I'd imagine, too, to be honest with you, the amount of power you're making with this car, I mean, even if you had a 315, a 325, a 330, I don't yeah, care what you put back there, you're going to spin. At a, at a certain point, once we're making that much horsepower, you're spinning tired. Yeah. You just are. Yep. You know, I just, like I said, I wanted to set it up to drive it. Yeah. Have fun with it when I wanted to. Give it a little goose once in a while. Yep. Keep everybody yep. honest, and that's it. You know, and the, what I found is everybody wants me to spin the tires all the time. I'm sure they do. You see that. You right. see the damn blower sticking out. You figure, like, oh, this guy's a hardcore drag race guy. Right. So you know what I do? I'll spool the blower up to where you hear that whine. Yeah. And then I'll just creep out of the tr I'll just creep out of it. I love and it. And they look at me like I'm out of my mind. I like how you. I like how you don't go to third and keep laying it down. Ah, just because, only because, I don't want to have a problem. And look, you're not only spinning right away. It's it's go. I feel it going yep. left, right? And so as soon you're as I feel it, that. Yep. Now if you throw it to third and stay in it, you're gonna probably keep coming left yep. a bit more. And that's how that's how problems take place. I agree, man. So I just and I for all you young guys, just so you know, this is one of the things us old guys have learned. <laughs> oftentimes, let's be honest, the hard yeah. way. Brain kicks in, and I that, mean, it's still fun. Like that little bit of tire spin, super fun. Yeah, you know what I mean. I don't feel like my life's at risk. You got to be honest. I really don't. okay you guys get the idea the car can spin tires without a problem <laughs> obviously we don't need to take the tires off the car and we're good we can keep going Some... hey you guys we'll meet you back at ken's place i gotta imagine so the first time you drive it you got that on there so you got the view thing going on you got the history of the car and you got this small little tire and you know you got this small little are, are you like super light on the throttle at first and so yes because it's so sensitive yeah when we back the throttle back off the full throttle i can put a little bit more pressure on it now where i've got it under control right. before it was i tried to feather it and it just didn't work right it just didn't work yeah very cool car i, 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 I thank I mean, you i gotta tell you jeff it, it's Personally, it's a little refreshing to get in the car with somebody that you don't know, you don't, you've never rid with them, all, you know, all the things that add up, right? Yeah. To have you go enough to feel your car, not even close to like scaring the hell out of me and make <laughs> me wonder what the hell I'm doing out here today. Really cool. And by the way, you guys, a correction, I asked Jeff during the interview, hey, so how many miles do you have on this since the build? You said about a thousand. A thousand. You just looked a minute ago. What'd you say, 28, 2900? Yep. So almost 3,000 miles in less than a year of having the car on the road. That's so badass. I get my money's worth out of yeah, it. Yeah, I'll say, man. Well, absolutely badass Camaro, and I knew this would be. I've been looking forward to this since having seen this car out at the quarantine cruise. I also love 
that Jeff doesn't drive like a jackass, so we got a little tire spin, got a little oh shit face out of me. We didn't get the oh face. But anyways, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope you enjoy the story that came with this exceptional build, and I'll see you in the next episode. All right, man, later. Mm -hmm.